All right, hi everybody, welcome to my lab. Um, today we're gonna work on something that's called the semi-permeable membrane lab. It's also known as the baggy lab. All right, um, so let's get started. We're gonna start out with this clear film. I don't know if you can see that on the camera very well. This is called a semi-permeable membrane. See if you can remember what semi-permeable mean. I'm gonna cut it. Um, so semi-permeable means that small things can pass through. If it's permeable, things can pass through it. Um, imagine like a volleyball net and throwing golf balls at a vo volleyball net. They can pass through it. Semi-permeable means, and a volleyball net would be this, semi-permeable means only small things can pass through. So for example, if I threw a basketball at a volleyball net, it wouldn't go through. But the golf ball, a ping pong ball, a marble, those things could pass through. So we're gonna use a semi-permeable membrane today to try to determine which is smaller, sugar or starch. Now, just because you can't figure something out, and I want to be really clear on that. This is not an insult to any of us. Just a lot of times students, they're like, that's impossible. You can't tell. And scientists have figured out how they could tell, even though they can't see things. They figured things out. So I want to show you a couple things. I've got my semi-permeable membrane. In here, I have a solution that's called the sugar starch solution. So I dissolved in the solution. It's just water. I dissolved some starch. I dissolve some sugar. You can see my sugar. There you go. And they're floating in here. I'm going to mix it up a little bit. There we go. They're floating in here. And your task today, our task today, is to try to figure out which is bigger, sugar or starch. Well, we can't see anything. Like it's just dissolved in there. I can't tell which one is bigger. That's impossible, KJ. Well, what if we looked at it under a microscope? Nope, microscopes aren't strong enough to be able to see molecules. These are molecules. Um, so they're incredibly, incredibly small, smaller than anything that our um, smaller than anything that our microscopes can see. So this is what scientists figured out. They decided to use a semi-permeable membrane. And I'm gonna tie this semi-permeable membrane at one end. And what do we say semi-permeable membranes were again? I'm gonna go over here so you can see me. Semi-permeable membranes, again, remember, are um, they have pores in them. They have tiny little holes in them that allow tiny things to pass through, but not big things. So if one of these molecules, sugar or starch, if one of them is tiny and the other is big, what's going to happen here? Well, let's figure it out. So here's my semi-permeable membrane. I added sugar and starch. I can't see which one is bigger or smaller. So now I'm gonna twist this up. I'm gonna make it look kind of like a hot dog or something, you guys can see that. that it really helps if you make it really nice and tight like this. And it's super tricky to do this by myself. I'm scooting out here so that you can see me tying it. Take me just a moment. That's one. It sure helps when you have a lab partner to do this. Okay, I'm gonna try it one more time. I really, really, really don't want it to leak on either end. All right, so the only way that anything can escape from this bag that is very tightly sealed right now is to come out through the pores. I'm gonna assume that only the small thing can come out and the big thing cannot. Now, it's possible that they both would come out or that they both would get stuck and then we would be back to square one. Is that how they say it? Um, we wouldn't know which one was bigger. But let's take a look. So we've got sugar and starch. What we're going to do is put them in a beaker, put this baggie in a beaker. And we're going to let it sit for 10 minutes. I'm trying to turn it so you can see it better. There we go. We're going to let this sit for 10 minutes. So what should happen is diffusion. It's very concentrated inside of the baggie. And so whatever is inside, if it can get out into the water, it should diffuse out into the water. And then we're gonna test the water to find out what escaped out of the baggie. So it takes about 10 minutes. Um, so I'll pause the video and we'll come back in 10 minutes. Just a moment here. All right, it's been about 10 minutes. Um, this has been soaking in the beaker. So hopefully diffusion is happening. And if one of the molecules is smaller, We'll be able to, um, it'll have escaped into the water and we'll be able to test for it. Well, KJ, how are we going to test for it? Um, well, I have two tests. 
This first one is called the Benedict Solution, and Benedict Solution turns different colors when it touches a sugar. So remember, I put sugar and starch. I put sugar and starch in that original solution. So if this one touches sugar, it'll turn um, anywhere from green to yellow to orange to red. It's kind of lovely colors. Um, so this one, that's for testing for sugar. And then iodine is for testing for starch. Iodine is normally sort of this yellowish golden color. Um, and if it, um, if it touches starch, then it turns black or dark purple, something like that. Okay, so I'm going to test the water on the outside of the bag. I'm leaving the bag in there floating, and that's fine. But I'm going to test the water on the outside. In just a second, I'm going to squirt some... Um, oh, wait a minute, what am I doing? This, first of all, I got this water boiling, and that's because Benedict's solution has to be boiled. So watch what I do. I'm going to use a dropper, and I'm going to suck the water out from the outside of the baggie the semi-permeable membrane, and I'm going to squirt it into this test tube. And I'm going to do it a couple times so we have plenty of liquid in there. So there it is in the test tube. I don't know if you can see it. And now I'm going to squirt in some Benedicts. And what I'm testing for is, whoops, it just dripped all over me. Wonderful. Um, what I'm testing for is to see if any sugar escaped. But this, this test doesn't work unless it's boiled. So I'm going to go ahead and put this over here and let it boil for a little bit. I'm going to wipe off my hands that are covered with a chemical that you should never get on your hands. Um, and now I'm going to do the starch test. So I'm going to squirt the iodine directly into my beaker. Now, the iodine doesn't need to be boiled or anything, so I'm just going to let it squirt in there like that. And what I noticed right away is that the color didn't change, that the beaker, the water on the outside is still yellow. So that tells me that the starch didn't pass through the holes in this semi-permeable membrane. The starch must be like basketballs thrown at a volleyball net. They won't pass through. Um, so this is negative. This is a negative result, and that means that starch is bigger than the holes in the membrane. Let's take a look and see what's going on with our um, with our Benedict's test. Um, I don't know if you can see the color changing. I'm going to give it just a moment more, and then I'll hold it up to you. I probably should. I'll be right back. I'm going to grab a test tube holder because that test tube's kind of hot. I don't want to burn myself when I get it. All right, so I see, and maybe you can tell, that there is a vibrant color change here. I'm going to bring it up to you so that you can see that. That went from blue to bright orange. That's a positive test for sugar. So that means I want you to just remember what we did here. We tested on the outside. We tested on the outside, and we discovered that sugar did get out. Sugar escaped. Here it is, sugar escaped, but the iodine showed us that starch did not escape. Um, so that tells us that the iodine was big like a basketball and that the sugar was small like a ping pong ball. And so even though we can't see which is bigger, sugar or starch, we know that the um, larger molecule must be starch because it's trapped inside um, and wasn't able to pass through the tiny little holes in the semipermeable membrane, but that the sugar could pass through those tiny little holes. All right, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Let me know if you have any other questions. Whoops, I almost forgot to show you something. I, as I was cleaning up, I was like, oh, right, I didn't show them a really cool part of the experiment. Um, I left the semi-permeable membrane in our um, beaker soaking with iodine for several minutes while I was starting to clean up. And look what happened to the semi-permeable membrane. Let me show it to you up close. So remember that the color of the solution, it's just a clear solution. But now take a look at my membrane. It's kind of a bluish blackish on the inside. That's a positive test for the iodine. That's what color it turns when it hits starch. What is going on here? What did that tell us about the iodine? Well, it turns out, ladies and gentlemen, that iodine is a really tiny molecule, smaller than starch. And the iodine started to diffuse into the semi-permeable membrane. And when it touched the starch that was trapped in the semi-permeable membrane, can you see that? Okay. 
when it touched, I'm trying to get my black arms out of the way. There we go. There we go. When it touched the, the starch on the inside of the baggie, um, it turned that purple black. So we know that there's starch inside, um, but there was no starch outside. And that's why it stayed this lovely yellow pea color. All right. That's now really it. Have a great day.